I'm not too sure about this. It's not as clear as what we thought it was going to be. It's definitely going to be a fun dive. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Kicker Scuba Marine and we're out here at a private little pond or quarry up here in the beautiful mountains of North Carolina and we got a nice little private invite to come up here to dive it and basically what the property owners want us to do is head out here and just see what's down there, see if there's any equipment down here, just see what kind of fish is here. So we're going to jump in, i got three of us today, we're going to jump in do a quick dive. I think what we're going to do is actually head up the quarry, up into the creek head itself and then we'll come back and we'll do a cross current dive here just to see what's there. I'm not got too high expectations as far as what we're going to see just because it's pretty stingy right now. If I had to guess, we're only going to have about a foot or two vis. But primarily, we want to see how deep it is, see how cold it is, and just see what's there. So I'm going to grab these other two divers. We're going to jump in real quick, and hopefully we'll have a good dive. Fifteen degrees north. Well, I, I put them on top. I don't know if you can get to them. Yep. All right. Here we go. Hey guys, so I decided that I was actually going to commentate through this part of it um, simply because we didn't have the greatest visibility and for you to guys get a better understanding of what it is we're actually doing, how we're conducting the dive, I figured this would be the best way to do it. But in short, uh, we're in a kind of a triangular position here uh, as we're diving. Kind of looks like my fingers here. So I'm the middle diver. I've got a diver on the right and left of me as well, and we're just kind of swimming through. Uh, we're trying to stay not too far apart due to the visibility. As far as navigation goes, and I'll show you here on an overhead real quick, um, we're, we're trying to go from the deepest and widest section all the way up into the shallowest section up to the uh, creek head itself. And then we're going to come back and reset up for a secondary dive and, and go across it. But uh, just like any other dive, we took a navigational heading to begin with. I'm actually just following that navigational heading on my compass. And you guys are actually seeing multiple clips. We had several different cameras set up uh, between all three of us. So you're kind of seeing multiple different clips as we're heading out through here. Um, but conditions of the dive real quick, the water temp. And I apologize real quick. If I keep looking off screen, it's because I'm watching the video with you guys as well. So uh, that's why I kind of keep looking away from the camera here. But... Conditions of the dive, it was 55 degrees. I think we hit a max depth of about 28 feet on this particular dive on both the first and the second dive. Visibility is exactly what you're seeing. It's at the bottom, we had maybe a foot, up to two foot of visibility. Um, 
this general area from what we understand from the homeowner it's a little bit clearer than that but they've had a lot of rain recently uh, we are actually up in the mountains of North Carolina. We're at about 1,800 feet of sea level, so we are actually diving at altitude. If you're not familiar with what altitude diving is, it's any time that you're in a body of water that is above 1,000 feet of sea level. Um, there are special considerations when you dive at altitude, primarily because the ambient pressure that's surrounding you at the surface is actually going to be less than what it is at sea level or below sea level. So, obviously you're already going to have residual nitrogen in you. So if this is something you're interested in and you're wanting to dive the mountain lakes or the mountain streams, uh, take an altitude diver course uh, simply so that you understand how your body's already got some residual nitrogen in you. Um, you obviously, it's a lot easier to do this with a computer. You can just basically set your computer to whatever altitude you're at, but you can still use the tables to do this well, and the altitude course will actually teach you how to uh, calculate your dives using the tables like that. Um, but yeah, we're just swimming along. Um, constantly checking on our buddies because of the visibility uh, there's several different ways that we signal throughout this dive one is just simply okay if we could, had a good enough visibility to see and then just like in your night and limited visibility diver course we're just using our light signals it's the same signals that we use throughout the course if you if you took a night diver course so we're checking that as far as how i'm kicking here um I actually use multiple different kick patterns throughout this dive. I'm, I'm primarily propelling myself with what's called a modified flutter. So we all know what a flutter kick is. It's when you use your whole legs to kick, right? Well, modified flutter is when you keep your legs bent up, just like you were if you're gonna frog kick, but you're really only using, say, from your ankles down, or in some instances, just from your knees down versus your whole leg going up and down. So I'm primarily uh, propelling myself here using that method simply because of the way we're diving. I got three people here in front of me, or, or you know, there's three of us and we're all side by side, if you will. It's very difficult, actually, for me to do a complete frog kick here because they're so close to me, and they've got to be so close so that we can stay together due to the diving conditions or the visibility. Here. So I'm primarily doing a modified flutter. Now, with that being said, about every, say, 10 kick cycles or so, I will do what's called a modified frog. So instead of doing this big, bulky frog kick, I'm just simply doing a modified frog. There's two reasons I do that. One, it helps me stabilize myself a little bit better and hold trim. The other reason I'm doing that is, is since we're so close together, imagine if we're this close together underwater, that modified frog is going to allow my feet to kind of bounce off each diver and that gives me a good indicator of hey where's my dive buddies at when I do that modified frog kick I can actually feel if I happen to kick my buddy here or kick my buddy there and that'll let me know where he's at now in the incident that let's say I do a modified frog kick and I touch my buddy here but I don't touch my buddy over here well then I can stop everything I'm doing simply take my light and shine it behind me in a circle just like we teach you to do in night diver I can shine it in a circle to ask him if he's okay to make sure he's close enough to see my light and then if I see the reflection of his light come back then I know that he's actually close enough to me to see me or that he's close enough that he saw the signal and that I don't really have to worry about him at that point now if I signal and I don't get a response, then I'm gonna stop everything I'm doing. I'm gonna signal to my buddy on this side, make sure he's okay, and if he is, then I'll ask him, do you see our, our second buddy and all that? But we actually stayed together on this dive, so it was not an issue. But just to explain why I was kicking the way that I was. So we're moving along here. Um, and like I said, we hit a depth of about 28 feet. Uh, the coolest temperature we reached was about 55 degrees, which is pretty common for a mountain lake or a, a college. To me, this is more of a pond than it was a quarry. Talking to the homeowners, we found out this was not really a rock quarry, so to speak. This was more uh, used for mining for gold and, and things like that. Um, and it just filled up over the years. Now, we did hit that maximum depth of 28 feet, but talking to the homeowners a little bit more, we found out that uh, it was a lot deeper than that at one point. And based off the property and where the original water line was, our estimates were that this was closer to 55, maybe even 60 foot deep, because you could see up on the land where the original water line was, and either the county or the state one um, took the original property owners and basically told them, you're gonna have to drain some of that out. So they made them cut a canal or another creek uh, so that part of it would flush through there. But um, as far as what we saw, not much ecology. It was 
pretty much just uh, stumps and trees and, and that was it. I mean, we sealed, I'm gonna say the silt was probably a foot to two foot deep. I know there were several times I could take my whole arm, stick it down to my elbow. So that's about a foot and a half, maybe two foot down um, as far as silt build up, which is very common for uh, a mountain, a uh, little lake like this or a little pond. But we did see a little bit of fish in there, a couple brim, a couple small bass, nothing really uh, to be excited about. I was a little shocked I didn't see any catfish, anything like that. Obviously, there's not going to be any trout or anything in there. Uh, this, this body of water was creek fed, which you'll see towards the end of the video. We'll come all the way up into the creek area. We actually get caught up in a tree that's all the way up in there, but... Uh, we ended up making two dives, as I stated before. We made one that went all the way through um, the pond itself, from the deepest and the widest, all the way up to the creek head. And we come back to the widest section and, and cross back over the way we went, just so that we could cover it. Um, that's pretty much it as far as what we saw there and the conditions that we have. You can start to see a little ambient light now, and that ambient light, of course, is from the surface. So as we got back in to the creek, opening or where the creek fed into this pond um, it was a little bit clearer than where we got in at so we're starting to see a little bit ambient light from the surface that's poking through um, and of course it's not going to be as stirred up back there as what it is where we actually walked down in the water and got it stirred up but uh, we should be getting closer to the end of the dive here um, all in all it was, it was fun I, I actually enjoyed it I, Anytime that I can get underwater and explore a new area that's never been looked at before or dove before, I thoroughly enjoy that. Even if I don't see fish, even if I don't find something neat or some type of treasure, uh, I thoroughly enjoy uh, seeing a, a new body of water that, that's never been seen before. But yeah, absolutely fun dive in my opinion. Would I go back there? Sure. If I get another invite, I'll definitely go back. I know I'm going to be talking to the homeowners to see if we can use this as training grounds in the future for our public safety teams that we teach. Um, and also maybe since this is a mountain pond or a mountain lake, if you would, uh, see if we could possibly use it this winter for some of our ice diver training. Um, because I, I have no doubt in my mind this is definitely going to freeze over. Uh, so I may not have to travel quite as far up north to, to be able to teach our ice divers, but uh, you know, that's something I'll just have to talk to the property owner. But here, of course, we're coming to the end of the dive, so I'll give you some final thoughts here just briefly. All right, guys, as you can see, there's not much there. I think out in the center, we hit a depth of about 28 feet. Water temperature is 55, 56 degrees. Uh, to me, not more than a pond, but a very interesting dive. We went all the way up, and I'll kind of show you an aerial here. We went all the way up, just followed a navigational heading, found the creek head. We come back, and we did a cross navigational heading here. Once again, hit a depth of about 28 feet. A lot of trees, a lot of logs, a couple little fish, but other than that, just a very interesting dive. But I appreciate you coming on this dive with us. If you want to see more of these Can We Dive videos, just drop me a comment down below. If you really like this video, smash that like button for me. Definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Oh Whew, let's get this gear off.